now that we have become comfortable with the migration and evolution issues for existing networks and terminal equipment to become compatible and interoperable with ngn uh, there are some network elements and uh, functional entities which are important to be understood because some very interesting functionality can be realized through these of course uh, since these are uh, going to be software based so intelligence or the level of functional uh, um, features is going to be immense so we are going to look at what are intelligent networks and what is the role of soft switches with regards to providing some value added features we'd look at first of all the intelligent networks so intelligent networks is a proper terminology it's a standard network architecture that was put forth by itu telecommunication q.1200 uh, specification series it it targets uh, both fixed and mobile networks the purpose is to allow the telecommunication operators and service providers both to offer value added services in addition to the uh, more typical telecom services um intelligent networks are meant to provide um intelligent services by dedicated network nodes these dedicated network nodes do not uh, work at the core of the network rather these nodes provide service layer this service layer essentially implies that the services are end to end so the intelligence of the network as in offering multiple services resides at the edge of the network not in the core because uh, the providing intelligence to the core is not what ian is about so it means the intelligent network is going to be more about services and this is what exactly it is so we have uh, call related functionalities for instance uh, call screening local number portability if you change your location or your suburb or even your city for that matter the 0800 numbers the toll free numbers and uh, the prepaid calls uh, because usually it is assumed that uh, the postpaid services were typical for telecommunication but you can think about prepaid calling then uh, video calling group calling and developing your own uh, pbx virtually uh, that is to create a distinct group of users uh, that are physically co-located or even um, dispersed spread over large area then having one universal telephone number which is applicable uh, within the ngn or across multiple ngns then mass calling services that is a capability to have uh, uh, multiple calls initiated simultaneously to uh, multiple parties independently not like multicasting then uh without having to use um the country code or foreign dialing code as plus or double zero uh so dialing from abroad to the uh, homeland or calling from the homeland to abroad without having to use the prefix then reverse charging that is the um called party uh, pays then the discount coupons etc etc now the list can go on and on but how is it realized it is realized through software based um private branch exchange 
well there is a subtle relationship or i would say apple and orange comparison between a private branch exchange and a soft switch so we can say a soft switch can be configured to behave like private branch exchange but a private branch exchange cannot be assumed to be a full stack soft switch so all the functionalities that you've seen earlier are part of the um software implementation voicemail call handling whatever we've seen earlier um can be implemented in software two well known uh um uh, platforms such as asterisk and free pbx are known to be implementing uh, a lot of such functionality um in all these cases in fact almost always the pbx systems can be implemented on a pc server hardware as simple as installing another software that uses a complete stack so asterisk and free pbx use the complete stack the call server that we have seen in the context of uh, uh, emulation is a very interesting and useful component that provides almost all imaginable traditional services in pstn and istn uh, that could be uh, implemented um, that were otherwise implemented in our hardware so the functional entities in a call center are going to be a lot of uh, uh, in in a call server are going to be a lot of uh, specific sub modules for instance we have the access call server now this part of the call server implements the management of the access gateway itself uh for instance uh, allowing or admitting a subscriber after registration then a breakout call server now this module allows the control of uh, the trunking media gateways uh which connect with pstns so it means a uh, breakout or interfacing with the existing uh, pstn um switching systems is going to be the responsibility of this server then the next important component of the call server is the ims call server now the ims call server has the responsibility to manage the uh border gateways or the uh switches or the gateways which connect to other ngns and ip based networks uh so it means that uh, there is going to be a kind of uh, inter uh ngn communication and call handling through ims call server the gateway call server provides a compatibility between different emulation services for example emulation uh is implemented through a certain component in one part of ngn within the same ngn there is another emulation uh, implementation using another component these can be, be uh, made interoperable by using the um, gateway calls server then we have the routing call server that allows the discovery of uh, multiple call servers um which request could be initiated by uh, either of the call servers 